Gospel according to Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what will happen upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then Jesus told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpected like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And you may be seated. It's December, and it is dark outside. We get up in the dark. We go to bed in the dark. Too often, even the daylight hours are overcast, like today. A physician told me recently that almost everyone in this part of the world is vitamin D deficient, a nutrient we get from soaking in the sun's light. And yet, even with all of that darkness around us, I'm afraid that sometimes greater still is the darkness we feel from the wrong and the suffering all around us. Wildfires destroying a whole community and lives in Paradise, California. Strife and violence at our nation's border. And all around us are people whose lives are plunged suddenly into illness and grief. Today, on this first Sunday in Advent, in these dark days of December, we began our worship by lighting a candle. And everything that we do in worship today is going to seem quite out of step to the countdown to Christmas that's begun all around us. So if you're one of those people, one that's already humming Jingle Bell Rock, loving the Pinterest decorating ideas, and delighting in the Hallmark Christmas specials, well then fair warning, this first Sunday in Advent might seem a bit jarring to you. There's no sweet baby Jesus in a manger, no angelic visitors to his surprised parents or unexpecting shepherds. Instead, there are Advent hymns with somber melodies, a deep blue color, and as if that weren't enough, there's this strange apocalyptic text from Luke's Gospel with visions of destruction and distress. But in these words from the Gospel today is also a word of hope and encouragement for people living in dark times. We spend a lot of time, energy, and money at this time of the year on things that are momentary. The Christmas treats will all be eaten, except maybe for the fruitcake. The wrapping paper is going to make its way to the landfill, and Dad's new tie will eventually be donated to Goodwill. Everything we anticipate, for which we plan, what we try to take in, it's all going to be done with in just a month. And yet I think that more than any other time of the year, this is also a time when we try to hold on to the moments and the people around us. So we take photos and we make videos and we post on Facebook and Instagram, 
Maybe we're making photo books. There's something about this time of the year, I think, that makes us aware that nothing lasts forever. And maybe this sense is brought about by an awareness of lasts. Is this the last Christmas we can count on all the kids being home for the holiday? Is this the last Christmas that a loved one will be with us? Is this the last Christmas we'll celebrate in this home that holds so many memories for us? Or perhaps, like us, you know that the Christmas celebration you once loved and hold in your hearts is gone forever. Nothing lasts forever. The Gospel of Luke speaks to us today of things that will not last. It's a passage that's sometimes referred to as the little apocalypse. Jesus speaks here about a coming time, the end of time as we know it. Jesus says the nations will be in distress and the seas will roar. He describes a great earthquake so terrifying that people are fainting from fear. It's a description that honestly doesn't sound all that different from what comes across our news feed in a day or what you'd hear on the evening news. Over the years, interpreters of scriptures have used these texts to try and pinpoint the exact timing of the end of the world. Or they've used these texts or ones like it to try to stir up fear in people, believing that frightened people are more likely to repent and turn to God. But in my experience, people who are motivated primarily by fear are much more likely to turn in on themselves and do stupid and selfish things than they are to turn to God and turn to the world God loves. This portion of scripture was not intended to frighten people. Rather, in the midst of terrible circumstances, we're told not to be fearful, but to be watchful. Luke instructs us to be awake and aware because he says there's more going on than meets the eye. In the midst of the mess, God dwells. This gospel before us today, on this first Sunday in Advent, is here to offer hope. Not a hope that comes from closing our eyes and ears to the world around us, but hope that's grounded in a God who stands with us in the midst of these times, offering us redemption. Well, Luke's gospel is clear that there are powers in this world that are real and terrible. Luke is also clear that they are not permanent. The only thing that endures to the very end is God's word. A word of peace, forgiveness, restoration, love, and eternal life. A word that is spoken to us and to this world, most especially in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Andrea de Groot Nesdal is a pastor of our church, and she served for a time as bishop of the South Dakota Synod. She completed her pastoral internship while she was a student right here at United Lutheran. And she tells a story about a tornado that took place while she was serving as bishop in the community of Spencer, South Dakota. Among the many losses, which included six lives, was an ELCA church building, home to St. Matthew's Lutheran Church. After the tornado, Bishop Andrea walked through the remaining rubble of the community. It was an unbelievable sight. A grain elevator twisted and fallen, a water tower toppled, whole buildings just gone from their foundations. And as she walked with church and community leaders to the church site, even those who knew the town well became disoriented. As they came near to the place where they believed the church had stood, about a half a block away, someone called out, Hey, there's the statue. There's Jesus. And sure enough, there it was. The traditional white statue of Jesus that stands at the center of many small churches on the altar with arms outstretched in a loving manner. 
The white paint on the statue was nearly gone, and someone later said that one of the arms was broken. And that group initially thought that somehow this statue had stood through it all. But they later learned a different story. Two young girls who were helping to clean up for a family member at a nearby home had taken time to walk over to where the church had been. And they saw the statue lying in the rubble. And they figured that everyone in Spencer, South Dakota, needed to see that Jesus was still there. And so they stood him up for all to see. Again, this Advent, we light candles against the darkness, and we hold up Christ for one another and for the world to see. In Christ, we know that all of time, the past, the future, this present moment, all of time is held in God's own being. Like Ebenezer Scrooge, whose mystical visions of the past and the future transformed his present reality from fear and miserliness to joy and abundance, so the knowledge that God is our beginning and our end transforms our experience of this moment. Because this is God's world still, because we have come from God and are on our way to God, we roll up our sleeves and we get to work doing what we can do in our corner of the world to care for this world God so loves. This week I was thinking about a grade school teacher I had who taught me, taught our whole class, the importance of looking up when you walk. Don't watch your feet, she said to us, or you're going to start depending on your eyes to do the walking. Well, I thought about that, and I tried to do as she taught. And what I found was that when I looked up, on my way home after school, I could see home. And when I could see home as I walked, the walk went faster and my heart was lighter and I walked more bravely into that cold winter wind. I think that what my teacher taught me, taught us, was to keep sight of the bigger picture, to keep focused on our destination, the purpose, the mission, because when we do, there's new strength for the journey. Jesus calls us in today's gospel. I think you heard it. Stand up. Raise your heads. Advent calls us not to be so absorbed with watching our feet that we lose sight of where they are taking us into the fullness of God's kingdom. Nothing lasts forever except according to Jesus today, his word. Jesus is the word made flesh. And in Jesus, God joined together the temporary with what is eternal in order to give us what will indeed last forever, resurrection and eternal life. It's a promise that I'm clinging to. It's where my eyes are fixed. Amen. <laughs>